Greetings. Welcome to Learner Burn Studios. And what the F? <laughs> I always thought that uh, here I you know, start off this venture similar to you guys as far as Lost PLA. And as much as it's like, going, oh, cool, I can print patterns and burn them out, it's the same as wax. Well, obviously not so much. The, you know, when in doubt, if you can do Lost Wax casting, that's certainly the way to go. Um, but, and it's certainly, you know, fascinating and curious to be able to 3D print your patterns, but, you know, there's really not enough information out there. There's plenty of people trying it. A lot of people are having some success. Most people are still struggling with the subtle little details and I'm doing the same. You know, I, you know, went down this path and, and it really got my head, you know, everyone's mentioning lost PLA, lost PLA. And I really, you know, got hung up on that. And so, uh, but as looking at, okay, what, what PLA is the right PLA to use, you know? And so, you know, it's like, uh, different colors, you know, neutral colors, you know, there's all these different kind of aspects to it. And then suddenly it's like, okay, well, there's also these other alternatives, you know, whether it's a, a product called Mole, which is more of a kind of a waxy filament. And I'm not sure if it necessarily falls into the PLA category, but it's certainly implied that it is. Um, but as well as uh, Polymaker's Polycast material. You know, I was introduced to that as a, as a uh, PLA substitute and it never clicked with me that it wasn't actually PLA. Um, it does work, it, it prints really nicely. It's really you know, nice to clean up, sprues really well. And I've had a lot of successful castings with it, but I'm not having 100% successful castings. And so it's really kind of led me towards, you know, what are the, you know, the, the, the subtleties or the challenges that really kind of go into what temperatures do I need to get a, the right burnout, right? So it's, it's been a real struggle. There's, you know, a, you know, a lot of kind of weird misinformation or conflicting information out there, again, on burnout temps for different PLAs. And, and for like for polycast, it says that there, you know, it, there's some literature that says, you know, at least 700 plus uh, C or ideally 900 C to, to burn it out. And so what that 16, 1650 F uh, Fahrenheit uh, for a burnout and, you know, and then it's going to be ash free. Well, realistically at that temperature, it damn well be better ash free, but um, as opposed to a lot of people burning out their, their PLAs um, in standard investment um, at lower temperatures. In my last video, where I got into talking about lost PLA, um, it was brought up to me pretty quickly amongst the, the community at large that polycast is not PLA. It's actually PVB. And, in, and of course, if you look at PVP, it's, you know, one of the main characteristics is, is that it's heat resistant or more heat resistant than, than traditional PLAs which inherently makes it, you have to burn it out at a higher temperature. Instead of just, you know, throwing out some, you know, random information and saying, going, hey, this works. I really want to kind of step back a second before I put out the next couple of videos and finish in the, you know, the, the, the series on, on lost 3D printed material. And, uh, and then get into, you know, why, what temperatures and, and uh, why they work. So I'm going to, I'm setting up a series of, of tests, different PLAs, different PVPs and polycast. And I'm gonna try a few experiments to see, you know, like which ones actually, at what temperature do they actually burn out at? Um, as well as, you know, which ones produce less ash or less debris that needs to be then, um, as a second step needs to be, you know, evacuated from the mold. And whether that's uh, with an air hose and blowing it out or uh, rinsing out the shell with water to eliminate that, there's ultimately extra steps. I guess where I'm going with this is going, I want loss 3D printed material to be a viable way as an alternative for wax casting. Now, realistically, you know, a, 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 you know this piece, um, when it actually worked the first time, um, took about 31 hours to print. Well, realistically, that's not super cost effective. And I can easily make a mold, as I have in, in earlier videos in the, the series, to do this skull. But really where it kind of comes, where I, I think 3D printing really comes into play are on patterns that are really tough to make a mold of, or it's cost, or, you know, cost, in, or it's inefficiently, cost inefficiently. Anyway, it winds up being a challenge and it's not uh, cost product. God damn it. What am I looking for here? Um, it's, it's not efficient enough. And so where that really comes down to play and stuff like that, if, if I have to cast six of anything, 
then ultimately making a mold, no, how, no matter how difficult that mold is, it's going to be easier to cast you know, large multiples with. But if I have an object that I only need one of, then the 3D printing really comes into play. And more specifically, if I need to you know, scan the skull initially, but if I need to make it tinier, if I need to make it bigger, then 3D printing in, a, in or with, in combination with scanning really comes into play and really hits its, you know, its, its strong points. So anyway, so before I jam forward and, and take care of some of these other aspects with casting with the, with the PLA and some of that, I wanna you know, follow up with you know, a little more experimentation. And uh, so again, just need you guys to be patient. I really appreciate you, know, you as my community at large and the, the community that's developing around my channel. The fact that you guys are out there and are responding because um, fundamentally, you know, as far as the actual overall casting process, I've been doing it for a long ass time and I definitely know myself, but it's like, oh, but there are a lot of things that I'm still experimenting with as much as you guys are. And so I really, you know, appreciate this dialogue that's developing uh, between me and you. And I look forward to continuing the conversation. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I look forward to sharing the ex my exploration, expor explore my explorations of this material and how it bounces out against traditional lost wax casting. So with that said, um, until the next video, be creative and be safe.